Well, I'm, I'm going to continue where I, this is going to be part two of what we talked of um, from the previous blog talk that I did. Continuing in the same vein of thought. Hallelujah. But you know, we had, we had, a, we had a good word yesterday that the man that y'all ministered to us, you know, our, our shepherd, our blessed pastor, was laboring to feed the sheep as always. And I'm truly grateful for everything that our pastor does, our shepherd does. You know, pastor's been very busy, you know, traveling back and forth and getting ready to go out again. And I know for certain with the um, Hebrews to Negroes uh, meeting next month. And no, and no tell him what he has planned in between. So, so y'all remember to keep the man of y'all in prayer. Keep our shepherd in prayer. You know, y'all keep, keep maintain his strength and keep giving him his word to feed us. Hallelujah. All right. So this is Jesus knocking at the door, part two. All right. But you know, yesterday when Pastor was preaching, you know, you know, let's 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 you know, for the recap, you know, with the theme of uh of this blog talk has been a previous blog talk about fellowship. And you know, when he was preaching yesterday, you know, dealing with a lot of sin, sins and things that would uh, disrupt, that would disrupt fellowship and cause, you know, problems amongst us. You know, when he talked about, you know, a brother lusting after your wife, you know, that, that, that would make it hard to fellowship with somebody when you're dealing with that. You know, you have to, you know, you got that going through your mind. Or, or when you got, you know, tail, the tail bearers and the slanderers going around, you know, that's going to cause some problems with fellowship. You know, that those are people who are operating in a contrary spirit. You know, that's not the nature of Christ. You know, Yeshua, Jesus. They're not, you know, you're not operating in the Ruach when you are in those things. Oh, that manner of spirit. When Jesus said to the disciples, you, don't, you know not what manner of spirit you're of. And some people don't know what the heck they're doing when they're sinning. In, the, in that capacity, and some do. Some some are uh, like he was. What Pastor bring out yesterday? The people who are uh, that sin presumptuously. You know, people that are very daring. You know, arrogant in their willful, wicked way. And we definitely don't need that amongst us. And don't want to have that type of spirit. But you know, over in um, John chapter six. You know, Jesus said this. Of course, you know, go back and read this whole thing in context. I'm going to start at verse, uh, let's start at verse, I'll start at verse 60. Plus, it's talking about him having the words of eternal life. Now, many, many therefore of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, this is a hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said, he said unto them, does this, does this offend you? What and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? You know, what if y'all see me go up? Then what? It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are some that, are, but there are some of you that believe not. But Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not, and who should betray him. But key on verse sixty-three. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So, we, so a lot of times when people get offended, it's because they have no spirit in them. They, they don't have, they don't understand spiritual things. You know, they can't, they, you know, they uh, have no comp- spiritual comprehension. That darkness within them, don't let them comprehend the light, the spirit of God is speaking. You know, of course, you know, the men love darkness rather than light, too, you know, because their deeds are evil. And so when Pastor was talking yesterday, you know, he's talking about, you know, fruit ministry yesterday, he's talking about the, the evil, some of the evil deeds that are amongst us, you know. And we need to get have that uncleanness out of us. You know, of course, you know, a lot of these things are, um, Motivated and driven by spirits. And thank, you know, but thank God we have a deliverance ministry. So you got a lust problem, get delivered. You got a slander problem, get delivered. Now, first of all, repent. Don't just get in the chair and say you want deliverance. You haven't done the first part. Hallelujah. 
But, you know, we need to make sure we guard our hearts, saints, and keep ourselves pure. Keep ourselves in the love of Yah and love our brethren. Let's not sin against our brethren. But, you know, if your brother sin against you, rebuke him. Same thing Jesus said. Then that, that'll help maintain fellowship, too. You know, of course, and if you don't hear you, then go get another brother and go to him again. But hallelujah. You know, for saints, you know, it was, it was a good, it was a very good word, edif- very edifying. And we need to let those things sink down our ears. And like Pastor said, you know, that, that'll keep the devil at bay for a little while, you know. If every, now everybody's discernment should be up. You know, if you're, you know, if you can at least walk, strive to walk in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to help you be able to discern when you see things that are amiss or show you what, what's wrong when, or what someone's doing wrong. And also, when you're doing wrong, chiefly, help, help them deserve, let them help you discern you. Hallelujah. That's the, that's the biggest thing. Oh, hallelujah. Well, praise Yah. Let's go to Psalms 8-4. You'll post that, please, Brother Ugly. Oh, Brother Ugly, do appreciate you, your, your labor of love here. As always, Brother, posting the scriptures for me. Probably for the blog talk, as always, you know, appreciate you being a good, faith, good and faithful co-host. You and all the saints for the fellowship, you know, do value all being here. Do thank you all for, you know, coming tonight as well. And those of you who aren't here at this time, thank you for coming to the fellowship. And when, you do, when you do have a chance to listen. And most of all, make sure you stay, you know, you stay connected with the ministry. Stay, keep up with the Shabbat services, everything that pastor's putting out in the videos. You know, if you're not on Patreon, get on there. Hallelujah. But just, just support the ministry, saints. Just stay connected. Stay in fellowship. All right. What did I say? Oh, Psalms 8-4. No, this was David. You know, it says, What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? You know, when you come in fellowship with him. You know, when, the, when the Most High came to Adam and Eve in the garden, you know, they heard his voice, the voice of Yahweh walking in the garden. You know, when they, of course, you know when they when they weren't when they hadn't sinned, they had no problem coming out to meet the Father. You know, they were joyful to hear his voice and and love that time of fellowship with the Most High. You know, who know don't say how long he stayed with them. You know, how long that time of fellowship lasted. But you know, sure, I'm sure it was daily. Maybe it was, I don't know, half a day, whole day. I mean. Whatever time it was in the cool of the day when the father came, you know, of course, he didn't stay at jaw jack with him, I guess, all day long because he did put man over the garden and had him to take care of it. So, you know, he didn't, he didn't, uh, you know, dismiss Adam from his, uh, his stewardship either. But they did have some, some fellowship. Hallelujah. And of course, you know, when they, of course, you know, when they listen to the wrong voice and sin. You know, they want to hide themselves. You know, most I had to come <laughs> go look for them. Now, he knew where they were, but, you know, they, they hide themselves, putting on their big leaves and everything. You know, you know, he's having to call them. And then finally, when they come out, like, hey, uh, Adam, you know, you know, where are y'all? Where are you? you know, well, we you know, we were naked, so we hid ourselves. You know, of course, you know, that, that, that sin made them naked, that knowledge they shouldn't have had, that knowledge of good and evil gave them that awareness, and they were naked, and that disrupted their fellowship with the Most High. But you know, of course, that they wouldn't have listened to the serpent. Well, let's, let's read this real quick. Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which Yahweh, the Elohim had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath Yah said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yah has said, you should not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. And of course, the serpent said, said to the woman, you should not surely die, for Yah does know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Of course, you know, Eve was tempted. She saw the tree that was good for food, that was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired, to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof and did eat, and gave also unto her husband what he did eat. And the eyes of them both were eight open, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. And now, since sin is entered in, and they heard the voice of Yahweh Elohim walking in the cool of the garden, 
uh, in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of Yahweh. I'm just reading like it reads, saints, from the presence of the Lord God amongst the trees of the garden. And the Lord God called to Adam and said unto him, Where are you? Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. You know, all this time before, you know, you weren't, they weren't afraid. You know, that, that they were free in their fellowship, you know, just like us today. You know, we don't have no problem coming amongst our brothers and sisters when, we, you know, when, you, when you're clean. But, you know, when you come in, when, you, but when you're running dirty, when you come in, you know, so, some people... You know, I've seen this time and time again at different times. You know, when a saint is um, clean and confident, they don't have that, you know, like a pastor says, you, you know, your, your continence, your, your, your continence tells them. You know, when, they, when they're clean and confident, they come in clean and confident. You know, it's meaning when they, when, they, when they know they haven't sinned, you know, they're, they're happy, they're joyful, they're, they don't carry that shameful look about their face. If I, I can just describe it like that, that's the best way I can describe it at the moment. They don't have that shameful, you know, that shameful, that shameful look about their face. You know, their their countenance bright. But you know, when they're dirty, their, their face actually looks dirty. Hard. You can get kind of that hardness of sin on them as well. And um, you know, they just you, you see that filth on them. You know but tell you the truth saints, it really shouldn't really shouldn't be like that. I mean why 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 go out and sin? You don't have to sin. You're not a servant of sin anymore. But you shouldn't be. You're not in that bondage anymore. You, you, you know, who the Son has made free, you're free indeed. And if you get tempted, okay, you tempt, you yield it, die, but then turn and repent. And keep walking with the Most High. Walk righteous. You know, if you need help, call a brother or sister. Get them to help you. All right, we go on. Of course, the Most High says in verse 11, and he said, who told you that you were naked? Who, is, who told you that I was naked? Have you eaten of the tree where I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Now you're getting out to the nitty gritty here. You know, did y'all disobey me? Did you, eat, you know, eat of the tree that I told you to stay away from? Of course, you know, we, we had the blame shifting part going on there. You know, the serpent, the, the, the man said the woman, the woman said the serpent. You know, of course, y'all did with everybody. And cast them out of the garden and made the serpent crawl on his belly. But, you know, but that, but you see how that sin messed up that fellowship there. Of course, before the, the most I send them out, you know, he didn't send them out in sin, though. He, he did, um, you know, slay the animal and clothe them and everything. And, you know, so so he did help Adam and them get it right. But, of course, you know, he still got the judgment. Now, you're not going to have the type of fellowship you had with him before. Now it's changed. Hallelujah. But now let's go on to. Um, I'll come back to that. Let's go over to Revelation. Revelation chapter 3. Verse 19. I'm ask y'all saints. Now, how many times have you come to come to assembly dirt? You know, you, you know, you know, your brother and sister see you looking at you. You know, you know, you know, you know somebody with the eyes of discernment looking at you, seeing 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 your countenance, seeing seeing, seeing that your countenance is actually falling. You know, because you're not the Bright-eyed, Holy Ghost glowing saint that you normally are today. And the bad thing is, sometimes you come to assembly that way and you leave the same way. And, and, and the sad thing, because you know, saints, you know how pastor, pastor, I, I say it like this, he harps this all the time to us, harps this all, to us all the time, you know, about taking this walk serious, seriously. And a lot of us just don't. You know, now of course that's none of you. Now, that wouldn't be you. Uh, let me pick on somebody here. Hold on. All right, brother Jeff and sister Anna. That wouldn't be you guys, right? And that wouldn't be, of course, not you, brother. Especially when you wear that that bow tie. No, that's brother Jermaine wearing a bow tie. But you know, but come on, saints. You know, we really got to take this thing, take this walk serious. You know, like what, what Pastor said yesterday. You know, the day that we hear the Most High's voice, heart not your heart. You know, he might have a brother rebuke you for. You know, for your tra- for you walking the transgression, or a sister can rebuke you for walking the transgression. That's still the Most High reaching out to you, trying trying to help, you. often throwing you a lifeline if you take it. But you know, but you harden that heart, stiffen your neck. You know, you gonna be cut off without remedy if you keep on. But you know, let's let the love of Yah 
constraint. That's keep us. You know, if you mess up, let them draw you back. Get be drawn back. Just run back. Shoot, don't even be drawn back. We, we, we know when we mess up. I'm like Adam and Eve hiding, and he got to go police you up. They should have just ran out. Their father, we see, we messed up. You know, but you know, but they, they had to play the game with them. Father had to, you know, had to deal with them. You know, it's easy just to fall. What, what's what Jesus say? Fall, fall on the rock and be broken, so the rock don't fall on you and grind you to powder. Hallelujah. Let's just humble ourselves before the Most High. Hallelujah. All right, now let's go to. Move my paper. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah, Revelation 3, 14 through 19. Hallelujah. And don't forget, saints, you do fall, you get tempted, you know, that, is, is that which is common to man. Temptation's going to come. It's what you do with. But if you do sin, you got to advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. The blood of Jesus is available to cleanse you from all your sin. You know, of course, we got deliverance to help break you from the, break the bondage of those sins off you as well, too. So you don't have to, like I said, we don't have to be bound. And we used to sing a song. Uh, listen, Deacon Gass used to sing all the time, especially this song. You know, Jesus, give it to me. Why should I be bound? No, nah, well, it's a yeah, song. The joy that I have, Jesus gave it to me. Why should I be bound? He delivered and set me free. Why should I be bound? I'm not doing it just the saints. I'm not a singer, but but anyway, you know, Jesus gave salvation to us, gave deliverance to us, the, the, the abundant, abundant life in him to us. We don't have to be bound. Hallelujah. All right. Revelation 3.14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen. The faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of Yah. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would that thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, I counsel thee to buy of me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye cells, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So let's make sure Jesus in our walk, saints, let's try to make let's make sure Jesus is not outside. Not, not outside the door seeking to gain entrance. We should we, we should be giving him open access to us at all times. But you know, here you know, in in this chapter here, in Revelations here, with the lay of the sins. You know, he's outside. He's knocking at the door, knocking at the door, trying to get in, wanting to, wanting the entrance. To those that got an ear to hear. At any given time, in our in our spiritual states, you know, most times on the outside. You know, what what's the reason? Why, why is he why is he outside though, saints? And I have to ask that question again. So why why is Jesus outside of your life? I hope he's not. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 14. And we'll come back to Revelation 3.20 again. I'm going to ask that question again. Let's go to Luke 14. We're going to read verses 16 through 26, Brother Ugly. Hallelujah. Praise Yah. All right, and we'll go on. Then said he unto a, then said he unto him, a certain man made a great supper, and bade many, you know, invited many, and sent his ser- his servant at supper time to say to them that were bidden, Come, for all things are now ready. 
and they all with one consent began to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground, and I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So the servant came and showed his master these things. Then the master of the house, being angry, said to the servant, Go out quickly into the streets and lanes of the city, and bring in hither the poor and the maimed, the halt and the blind. And the servant said to his master, It is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. And the master said unto the servant, Go into the highways and hedges, and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Well, I say unto you that none of the, those men which have, none of those men which were bitten, shall taste of my supper. You see, now the master's angry, right? Because of the excuses that everybody offered up. You know, I, I, yeah, these people had ample opportunity to come. Supper's ready. I got everything ready for them. We're going to feed them. You know, we're going to have some, a good time of fellowship. But they're making excuses. And they're doing their own thing. You know, the same thing like some of us, when it comes to keeping the commandments, from the Shabbat to everything else, you know, you got we got an excuse. You know, well, you know, uh, Master, I got to work on the Shabbat because my job won't give me it off, and I don't have enough conviction in my heart to um, obey. Well, I don't have enough love in my heart to obey you. You know, just like that, I just can't. I just can't. Uh, I can't lose my job. You know. You know. I remember um, years ago, my mom told me this. I was talking, I was talking to you about the mark of the beast. And so, you know, you, reading this thing in the book of Revelation, you know, if you take that mark, you're going to be damned. You know, but she was like, well, you know, God knows we got to eat. I was like, my goodness. If you take that mark, you're going to be damned, Mom. Don't you understand that? You know, but that, you know, but having to eat was her excuse. You know, so if, if people going to have many excuses. You know, and then we as servants of the Most High, Yah, we shouldn't make any excuses as far as our obedience to Him, you know, our submission to Him. And anything that we're supposed to do. You know, a lot of people make excuses not coming to fellowship. You know, well, you know, I live 20 minutes away, but, you know, it's just, you know, I really want to just rest on the Shabbat. You know, I haven't done anything all week long, but, you know, the Shabbat's just a good day off, a good day for me to have off, and I'll do my own thing and rest. You know, you know, no don't matter what the Scripture says about not forsaking the assembly of yourselves together. You know, I'm just going to stay away from the saints today, though. You know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I, you know, I got to do me. You know, that's the excuse. You know, you know, just whatever you don't, you throw, whatever you can figure out, what people can uh, conjure up, manufacture, they're gonna make an excuse when it comes to doing their own will. You know, and, and speaking of that, let's go here. Let me find that real quick. Where is that scripture? Hallelujah. Just a second, Saints. Who is that? That's it. Yes, okay, let's go to Matthew. Matthew sixteen. 24. So, brother, let's, let's go um, Matthew 16, 13 through uh, 26. I was going to cover all that anyway, so I'll just bounce around there. You know, but Jesus said this. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. You know, take up his tree, his stake. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall, shall 
whosoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. And the kicker right here. For what is a man profited if he, if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, his job, his money, things of this world that he covets after desires. You know, whatever his will is, you know, the Luciferian doctrine, you know, do as you will. You know, so well, isn't it more important to obey the most high? I'll tell you what, we'll come back to Matthew. Let's go over here to, um, I want to cover this too. Let's go over to First uh, Samuel. Chapter 15, verse 10. We'll, we'll come back to Matthew, the rest of Matthew, Brother Ugly. First Samuel, chapter 15, verse 10. 10 through 21. 10 through 21. Then the word of the Lord came unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he has turned back from following me and have not performed my commandment. Hmm. And we had that going on a lot today, huh, saints? People not performing the commandment. Remember the Sabbath day? No, I got to work most of the time. You know, my excuse. You know, don't covet. Nah, well, you know, I got to have I got to have Brother Jermaine's bow tie. And I really like Brother uh, Brother Ugly's car, so I got to cover that. And don't forget what Pastor said yesterday during service. You know, some of your brothers... You don't tempt, I'm not tempted to cover none of you brothers' garments. <laughs> you know, his mom's in the assembly here about how some of us um, are tired. You know, we, we're Gentiles and heathens. We put on our Sunday best and the, and the temples are day gone. But coming to the most high now, well, you know, I'm just throwing in there all the thing. And some of you probably sitting at home, sitting at home in your pajamas on, on Shabbat, doing Shabbat service. Let's have some discipline, saints. Let's respect the most high. Hallelujah. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Most High, to the Lord all night, to Yahweh all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and is gone about, and passed on, and down, and is gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gigal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of, of Yahweh, I have performed the commandments of Yahweh. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? You know, of course, you know, Saul saying, Hey, I've, I've done everything. Well, Samuel, really? <laughs> Don't sound like it to me. And Saul said, They have brought, brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to Yahweh. Thy Elohim, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what Yahweh has said to me this night. And he said unto him, Stay on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and Yahweh anointed thee king over Israel? No, ask him a question, right? Get perspective. And Yahweh sent thee on the journey and said, Go and utterly, utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of Yahweh, but didst fly upon the spoil and did, and did evil in the sight of Yahweh? And Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of Yahweh and have gone the way which Yahweh sent me and have brought Agag, the king of, the, king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Blame shifting right here, saints. Verse 21. But the people took of the spoil, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto Yahweh, thy Elohim, and Gigal. You know, Saul got all these excuses why, why he didn't know, why, why obedience wasn't um, enforced here. And Samuel said, Have Yahweh as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying? The voice of Yahweh, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, to hearken than the fat of ram. 
You know, of course, you know, we had that problem today. We got a lot of rebellion going on. Instead of obedience. You know, obedience is a key thing in this walk, saints. You know, but, but you know, you look at Saul. If he just would, have, just would have obeyed, but yet he he couldn't obey. He he agreed the Most High, you know that, and, he, and, and uh, let's say pleasing the people is what he gave in exchange for his soul here, and doing his own thing. In, in verse twenty three, twenty three, for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of Yahweh, he has also rejected thee from being king. And let's not let us not forget also, saints, that you know we're kings and priests too before the Most High. But we, we don't want to be rejected when when uh if we don't want to be rejected, we better make sure we don't um reject him and his word and what he tells us to do. Remember, remember the Shabbat, not lying, not coveting, you know, not wanting to be a murderer, you know, not killing, you know, not wanting to you know kill somebody just for nothing. One thing for self defense, but just wanting to be a murderer. You know, committing adultery, you know, having eyes full of adultery. You know, being an idolater. So let, let's let's walk let's walk holy saints. Let's be obedient children, which the most high has called us unto. We see the kingdom of Yah as as little children. You know, be converted like like the little children, like Jesus said. Because if we don't, we ain't gonna go in. You know, most most children, most young children are obedient most of the time. You know, of course, you got to chase ties them too. Hallelujah. All right, let's go back to um, yeah, what was that? Matthew. But all the saints, I want y'all to keep in mind now. Again, fellowship is the theme here. You know, hearing the voice of the Most High, obeying. You know, Jesus knocking at your door. Anytime, you know, you think about it. Anytime the Most High is knocking on your door. When the Spirit of Yah is moving on, He's speaking to you. It's like you could be going astray in something. The Holy Spirit, well, you hear that quiet little voice whispering to you, "Hey, don't do that, don't do that." You know, do this. But do we obey it when we hear? You know, we're in a valley of decision. You know, we're like, <laughs> you know, we, we're like, "Oh, what do I do? What do I do? You know, do I yield to the, to the temptation to sin, or do I just keep keep walking a straight line?" But you know, but if but if you uh, sow to the flesh, you're the flesh, you're going to reap destruction. But if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap life, life and peace. So, so which voice are you going to yield to when you, when, when you, when, when you hear? In, in your time of uh, testing, in your time of temptation, what, what voice are you going to listen to? Are you going to hear the Holy Spirit speaking, hey, go this way? Or are you going to listen to the devil? Nah, come on, let's go do this, man. You know, like you tempted, tempted, tempted Eve. Hey, go eat that tree. You know, you won't die. And, you know, hey. Hey, go go steal that Big Mac off the counter over there. You know, to cover that to somebody's clothes. Cover your mama's. You go steal money out your mama's purse. You know, kill your neighbor's dog for for nothing. You know, all all the different thoughts you may have that, that, that the temptations that may come to mind. You know, we just gotta we gotta be strong, saints, in our mind. Put on that helmet of salvation. <laughs> you know, if you have to. Shoot, go run right down the street, tell somebody, hey, look, lay, run to a brother and say, hey, lay hands on me, man. I'm getting tempted too much. I need help. Lock me up in the closet to keep me from doing the things I don't need to do for a little bit. I need, I need some help. But either way, saints, we gotta, we're going to have to be strong with the most high. We're going to have to, a lot of Ruach to sustain us to keep us from uh, falling. But you know what the proverb says, when a righteous man falls seven times, you know, he gets up. You know, just lay there. If you do fall, don't just lay there and wall in that sin and that and the guilt, the shame, the condemnation of it. Get up. The Holy Spirit can say, hey, look, I, what did Jesus say to the woman? You know, the woman that was caught in adultery. You know, hey, woman, where are those line accusers? Well, you know, my, nobody accuses me, Master. Just, well, neither, you know, you know, well, neither do I then. You know, what did he tell us? Just go and sin no more. Same thing for us, saints. You know, any time of temptations or weaknesses and things like that, just Okay, if you fall, get up, repent, and then just continue on and go and sin no more. Continue, continue to strive, be strong. The Most High will sustain you. All right, let's go to First Kings, chapter. Oh wait a minute, we gotta go to Romans. I mean, on Matthew. I forgot about that. Let's go back to Matthew, brother. 
Matthew 16, verses 13, 13 through uh, 26. <clears throat> when Jesus come into the, came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living Yah. Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And of course, we got the foundation of the Catholic Church right here, right? The first pope. You know, that's what they use, use, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, you look at that. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Flesh and blood is not revealed unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now, you think about that, saints. What kind of communication... And the spirit was Peter getting, you know, he got that revelation. You know, so that's, that's him hearing the spirit speak. And again, you know, if you hear his voice, heart not your heart, but you hear him knocking at the door, you know, he's going to come in. And that's part of that communion with the Holy Spirit there. Even though Peter didn't even have it, but he's able, at least able to hear that. All right, let's go on. And I will give unto thee the key, the key to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then charged he his disciples that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. And from, and from that time forth, Jesus began to show unto, his, show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed, and be raised again the third day. And don't forget, over in, over in John 6, you know, Jesus did say, you know, my words are spirit and their life. You know, keep that in mind. You know, the flesh prophet of nothing. Verse 22, Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Master, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou an offense unto me, but I'll save us not the things that be of Yah, but those that be of men. You know, now who was speaking that out of, out of, out of Peter? And of course, well, you see Jesus let us know. Satan, you're trying to deter me from my mission. You want you want the will of man obeyed and done, not the will of Yah. You know, that thing that you desire, the thing that you save And many times, Pastor tell us things. You know, you know how many times he hears devil speaking out of people. You know, do you ever discern that devil speaking out of your brother or sister, or you can catch it coming out of yourself? You know, because easy to catch everybody else. But how about what you do? And that's when you, in true discernment, true sight is working. Catch yourself being a devil. You know, that tongue, that tongue, that world of iniquity, that tongue of fire. Hallelujah. Of course, ain't none of us, right, saints? And that wouldn't be you, would it, but Brother Ugly? How about you, Head of Glory? Not you either, right? And definitely not our family for Jesus. You know, not, not, none of you would be guilty of that, right? You know, saints. I, mean, I know y'all are all Holy Ghost filled saints. You know, you. Fire baptized, running for your life. You'd never, you'd never be guilty of any of that. I'm, I'm sure of it. Oh, hallelujah! I'm just picking on y'all things. <laughs> Bless y'all. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke 18, verses 15 through 18.
Yeah, I hear you, brother. Ugly, never. Not me, never. <laughs> I see y'all's comments. Saints, bless y'all. All right, Luke 18, verses 15 through um, 18. And they brought unto him also infants, that he would touch them. But his disciples saw it. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked him. Hey, man, get these children out of here. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer, little children, to come unto me. Forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of Yah. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of Yah as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. Like I said earlier, become little children. We humble our haughty adult mind and be converted. And receive it as little children, the kingdom, so we can go in. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Where is that page? Oh, well, let's go there. Luke 18. Because Jesus said, Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There's none good save one, that is Yah. You know, thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, you know, this young man got testimony. Hey, look, Master, I'm I'm a commandment keeper. I'm I'm doing this, I'm getting it done. Right? I'm not guilty of any of this. I'm good. Now when Jesus heard these heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing. He's going to bring it home now. So all that thou hast and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have tre- treasure in heaven, and come follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, unto, he said How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of Yah? For it's easier for a camel to go to, the eye, to a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of, the kingdom of Yah. Of course, the disciple says, Hey, and they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, the things which are impossible with men are possible with Yah. You know, man, I can't leave my riches. Man couldn't give it up. Hmm? He, he, that, that was his that was his uh that was his idol, the thing he couldn't give up for the most high. The thing that he gave in exchange for his soul. He said, Well, yeah, I'm gonna study y'all for that. That's the same thing for us as not keeping the Sabbath, you know, for our jobs. Same thing. We go away soft. Well, I can you know, how am I gonna pay my bills? How am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Walk in faith. If you got to lose your job, the job be down. Your soul is more, should be more important than your job, than anything else that you're doing. Have, have, that, have that attitude first. Obeying y'all above all else. He'll take care of you. So what if you suffer loss? It's like that cut off that young man's fellowship with the most high, huh? He was sorrowful. He, he had to, he couldn't give up what he had. Of course, the disciples say, hey, look, we left all. What, what, what are we going to get? And he said unto him, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that have left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom's sake, who should not receive manifold more in this present time and the world to come everlasting life. You know, a lot of us testify of that, that we have received manifold more in this present time, you know, land. I got lands up in Canada I can go to, lands in uh, Kentucky, lands in Kansas City, lands in, lands in Georgia. You know, so we got places to go. And many of you homes scattered throughout. You know, hey, we all got brothers and sisters, you know, scattered abroad now, Saints. So, you know, just because I lost my three brothers, not my two brothers, my three sisters, you know, I, I got uh, an abundant crop of brothers and sisters now. Hallelujah. I'm grateful to the most high that it happened. I'm glad the sword came in and cut them off. So they, you know, so it could be an increase. The righteous brothers, righteous sisters, people of like-minded faith, those that love to hear the 
voice of the most high Yah in the garden and want to commune with them now, not not hiding and sin like uh, you know, our natural families are, you know, loving that darkness rather than light. Hallelujah. All right. Oh, well, of course, you know, that rich young man, that rich young ruler there, the young man, you know, oh, we find, we read this again. Where'd you go? No, because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. You know, that young man didn't know that he was a, uh, that he was wretched, miserable, poor, and blind and naked before the Most High. You know, he manifested that when Jesus told him to give up everything he had so that he could receive everything that he needed. You know, he didn't, he didn't want to give up his riches, sell them, so that he could buy of him gold, try it in the fire, so he really would be rich. A white raiment that he may be clothed, and that the shame of his nakedness does not appear, appear in the, in the anointed eyes, anointed eyes with ourselves that he might see. You know, you know, he didn't he didn't want to trade up the earthly goods for the kingdom of Yah. In a nutshell. All right, let's go to um, what was that one I quoted earlier? Um, First Kings seventeen. Give me one second, please. Let me get a sip of water here. All right, First Kings seventeen. When we we're gonna read verses one through sixteen. Wait a minute. But I'm sorry, that's the wrong one. Let's let me find it. Where did I put it? That's myself up here. Hold on. Where is it? Not first kings. First Kings nineteen. I've jumped around on my notes, not in order. We we'll go there. First Kings chapter nineteen. We're gonna read verses. Uh, let's start verse one. One through fourteen. <clears throat> no, it's it. And this is uh, Ahab fleeing from Jezebel. I mean, um, this is with Elijah and Jezebel. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all, how he had slain all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow, about this time. And when, <clears throat> and when he saw that, he arose and went for his life, and came to Bathsheba, which belongeth to Judah. And left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die, and said, It is enough now, O Yahweh, take away my life, for I am not better than my fathers. You know, of course, we you know we heard yesterday from the man of Yah, right? Saying that uh reminded us that our fathers were stiff necked. You know, not you know disobeying the Most High. You know the ancients. Let's make sure we're not following the same pattern, saints. Let's uh, submit ourselves. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals. And a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. You know, so he's rest. And the angel of Yahweh came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mountain of Yah. This is what I want, really wanted to get to. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there. And behold, the word of Yah came unto him. Yahweh came unto him and said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? You know, what, why, why, why are you here, Elijah? What are you doing? And he said, 
I've been very jealous for Yom Elohim of hosts for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, they have thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. You know, Elijah's upset now, right? I'm having to, I'm having to run, for, run for my life, most high. These people want to kill me. That's why I requested that I might die. You know, cause they, no, nobody's serving you but me. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before Yahweh. And behold, Yahweh passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the before Yahweh before Yahweh was not in but but Yahweh was not in the wind and after the wind an earthquake but Yahweh was not in the earthquake and after the earthquake a fire but Yahweh was not in the fire and after the fire a still small voice and it was so when Elijah heard it that he wrapped his face in the mantle and went out and stood in the entering of the cave and behold there came a voice unto him and said what doest thou here, Elijah? Speaking to him again. And he said, I've been very jealous. I've been very jealous for Yahweh, Elohim of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword, and I only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And most times I told him to go back to Damascus. I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to anoint. The Lord said unto him, Go and return away to the wilderness of Damascus. When thou comest, anoint Hazel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, Nimshi anoint to be king over Israel, and Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of, um, the son of Shaphat of Abela, Abelam. <laughs> oh my goodness, saying these words, Abelam Moloch, shalt thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. But let's go back up here. No, he wasn't in the fire, he wasn't in the wind, he wasn't in the earthquake. At ver- no, verse 12, so after the earthquake, a fire, but the, y'all was not in the fire, and after the fire, still small voice. You know, so we get with fellowship, going back to fellowship again, you know, hearing his voice. You know, so Elijah heard that still small voice. Isn't that what guides you sometimes, saints, when, you, when you're with the most high fellowship and you know, how he's directed you by his voice at, at different times? So it's one of the ways to be able to hear the Hear the Most High. He's he able to catch your attention with that still small voice. You know, you know of course, like Pastor, it's very, it's very quick. You hear what? Huh? What? <laughs> but it's not like the devil coming in loud and clear all the time, or your own thoughts, you know, loud and clear, clouding out the voice of the Most High. But you know, that still small voice. So you, that's, that's how you're able to communicate and fellowship, and, and the Most High is able to direct you or direct us a lot of time in, a, in any given time. Um, but we got to be able to have our ears tuned in to hear. Him. You know, we can't be on channel channel seventy and he's on channel one. You know, thinking thinking you're gonna uh, thinking we're gonna be in communion with him, or communication with him, communication with him by the ruach if we're not even in tune with him. We got to be in tune with him though. And again, like the revelations, he said, "Have stand at the door and knock." If anybody hear my voice, so we got to make sure we're hearing hearing him, hearing him through the preaching. Oh, yeah, speaking of that, let's go to Luke chapter 24. I got a clip from Pastor I want to play for us, too, Saints. But, you know, are you, are you able to hear, hear the voice of the Most High Saints? You should, like I said on the previous broadcast, we, we should have that type of relationship with him by now. That, that's how, that same one voice that called you. You know, you heard this call. That, that's why you came. That, that's how he's able to reach you when you re- receive salvation. And if you're somebody that's hanging on the edge, give heed to his voice. Yield to him. Submit to him. Help with yourself before him. All right, let's go to Luke 24. So let me skip down. Let me find this. Twenty-four. Let's read. Um, 
let's start at verse um, 18. 18 through. I'm going to skip some of that. Thing. Y'all go back and read, read, read this when you had time. Um, Luke 24, 24. I'll start there. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre and found that even so as the women had said unto him, said had said even as the women had said but him they saw not is that the Christ is risen now Messiah had risen then said he unto them O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken ought not Christ to have suffered these things and and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them and all the scriptures the things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village whither they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it, and break and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and vanished out of their sight. And they recognized it was Jesus now. Like, oh man, that was him. And they said one to another, Did not our heart burn with us while he talked with us, by the way, while he opened to us the scriptures? And that's what he did up over in verses 25 and 26. You know, don't, 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 didn't our hearts burn yesterday when Pastor was preaching, when he was responding on the scriptures, opening to the scriptures to us, ministering to us? Most high dealing with sins and things in the in the assembly, you know, showing us where the devil's trying to get access and get place, or what some of us have given place to the devil. Did not your heart burn? No, don't burn at the hearing of the word of Yah. Let the burn, get let the bad get burned out. Let the good be getting burned in. Hallelujah. See, they, they, they were there fellowship with Jesus there. They didn't know it was him at that time until he revealed himself. But his words were uh, were, were convicting them, were, were, were having an effect on them. Hallelujah. All right, let's go to... Find my spot. But again, let me go back to Luke, Luke um, 14, 16, and 18. 16 through 18. Chapter 14, 16 through 18. Talk about that supper again. You know, a certain man made a great supper and bade many and sent his servants at supper time sent his servants at supper time to say to them that were bidden, come for all things are now ready. And they all with one consent began to make excuse. As I want to hop on the excuse thing, saints. So, you know, we hear the voice of the Most High. What excuse are we offering to him? You know, he, he don't deserve any excuses. Just that he deserves our, our, our obedience. And they was walking. Was once they began to make excuses, the first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I must needs go and see it. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have bought five yoke of oxen, and I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. And I've married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. You know, so I want to be excused too. I ain't coming. Either way, he ain't asked to be excused. I ain't coming. I'm out. You know, so let's not let's not make excuses on our obedience to the Most High. Let's submit ourselves. Let's do let's do the Father's will. What Jesus what Jesus come to do? He came to do the will of the Father. And that's all he came to do. He didn't have his own agenda. Father gave him direction. He, he, he received it, heard it, and came and came and executed. I believe we all can do the same thing, saints. We can be obedient children. Follow the example of Yeshua. All right, let's go to let's go to Luke chapter ten. We're going to read verses 38 through um, 42. Luke chapter 10, 
You got that, Brother Ugly? All right. And now it came to pass as they went. He entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was coming about much serving and came to him and said, Master, dost thou not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Bid her, therefore, that she help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Now Martha, her spirit was about serving as opposed to, you know, when the master came and he's ministering, you know, she's more, more, her spirit was more concerned about serving than here at that time. But Mary, her spirit was more about hearing than serving. And Jesus said, hey, that good part's not going to, I'm not going to take that from her. You know, he said, one one thing is needful. You know, it's better for her to be here listening to me, hearing right now, as opposed to doing all this serving. We get that later. First, while he's there ministering, take in what he's saying. Of course, I'm sure, uh, Mary took that rebuke, and Martha took that rebuke, I hope, and uh, let, let the servant go and sat down at Jesus' feet as well to be taught. Hallelujah. You know, let's go to Job 33, when we verses uh, 14 through 17. For y'all speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbers upon the bed, then he openeth the ears of men and sealeth their instruction, that that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. You know, verse 14, you know, y'all speaks once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth not. Man, you know, he's speaking to a man, speaking to a conscience. Hey, what, what, what'd you say? Huh? Or, or, or no, we ain't saying that. Man don't even acknowledge. Don't even, he didn't even hear it. And then the dream of the night with deep sleep, Paul, in, in, in the dream, in the night, in a dream, in a vision of the night when deep sleep falls upon men and slumbers upon the bed, then he's able to open a man's ear. And see that there's structures. He puts it, he puts it in, our, in our subconscious mind or our, in our mind while we're asleep. He's able to penetrate us then at times. You, know, you ever had a dream the most I was able to speak to you in it or something? Or, or vision? Vision? He's able to tell you something? Then you able to get that and uh, go with it? Something to that effect? You know, so he can withdraw you from your purpose, get you to go a different way and hide pride from you? Just one of the ways the most I may speak to us. Yeah, I did say we're going to go back to uh, Revelation. Hold on. What I put. So, again, saints, why is, why is Jesus outside knocking? You know? Says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. So, why is Jesus outside knocking, saints? We kick him out, we put him out, we get mad at him, you know, because he wants us to obey him, he wants us to keep the commandments, he wants us to live holy, he wants us to do the work of the Father, do his work, you know, he wants us to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, you know, cleanse the lepers. We get mad at him and kick him out because of, you know, because of that. Only step back from us and just letting us let what watch and see what we do. Then he comes back and comes back to knock on the door to see where our hearts are if we're gonna uh, answer him. If we, you know, see if we're gonna obey and 
follow him like we should. You know, because he is the good shepherd. You know, his sheep hear his voice, and they follow him. You know, we don't hear the voice of the stranger, or at least we shouldn't. But, you know, when we give place to the devil, that's a lot of times that's when we start to give place to the stranger. We're not following Jesus then. We're, uh, we're going to do our own thing. Let's go to First Peter. Verses 5 and 6. Yeah, let's read. We're going to read. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For y'all resist the proud, and give a grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of Yah, that he may exalt you in due time. You know, getting, you know going back, you know, Everything I've said, really dealing with, dealing with us, submitting ourselves to the Most High, hearing Him, and humbling ourselves and doing His will. You know, because what it say the Psalms, Jesus said, it's written to me in the volume of the book, I come to do thy will, O Yah. You know, for us, we need to just be willing to submit to the Most High and do His will. You know, he, hearing His voice, when He directs us, when He gives us instruction, especially coming from the pulpit. We need to be able to hear, hear and obey. Not that, not that difficult, it's not that hard, but you know, but, but if our will's not in it, if our heart's not in it, we're not going to obey the Most High. You know, we're going to be like Saul. You know, we're going to come, hey, I've done the will of the Most High. Yeah, well, brother, you done that? Well, why you got, why, why you got such a foul spirit about you? This, why, why don't you, like Pastor, you know, he can discern a hormone. You know, people with a hormone spirit. When he, when he's talking about that some weeks, months ago. Well, uh, well, let's say with people who got who have, who, who have the covetous spirit, you, you know, they they can be discerned. Just anything that's all of us that's about us is contrary, that's out of the way. You know, we're not hiding from the Most High. You know, we can even fool man or some or, or like you see, Pat. This is like Pastor said. Just because I don't say nothing, don't mean I don't know you, but I don't see. You know, so in a lot of cases, it's like that too. Too sometimes you're seen, you just you haven't been called out yet. But let's let's. Let's strive to be obedient children. I'm going to go back to that. Let's hear the voice of the Most High and just obey. You know, we got the word. That's one way he speaks to us through the word. If we can hear him through the word when we're reading, getting direction, and especially when the man of y'all is up preaching to us. We can hear that. Or if you're getting ministered to by you know, another brother or sister, somebody's giving you something, the starts from the Most High, if they get under the option, if he gives them direction to give to you, obey that. It's not hard, saints. We can, you know, we, we have so much to force. We don't have any excuse, you know, because we're, be we're going to be without excuse before the Most High, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, you know, we, we got everything before us. You know, our, our, our uh, ancestors, you know, they, they they had to live this thing, and they, and they didn't have a, you know, they didn't have the luxury of having a book. You know, we got the luxury of having this book of, of their life that was written of all the mistakes they made. You know, so we really shouldn't fail the test at all when it comes down to it. You know, we we got the blueprint, and you know, we can we can learn from their mistakes. And not make the, and not make them again, but you know, we, so we don't want to be as our fathers were. You know, we got the ruach on the inside now. You know, we just had Pentecost. You know, I'm sure some, I'm sure there's some testimonies out there, folks that received the, received the Holy Ghost, received the Holy Spirit this Pentecost. You know, but now that 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 law is no longer on the outside; it's written on the inside of the tables of your heart, and that and that should be that be the thing that's guiding you now. You allow the ruach to direct you, to guide you. you know, plus, the love of y'all. You got that love in your heart now. Come on. Shouldn't that constrain you enough in itself to uh, get you to uh, do the Father's will? After all that He's done for us, commit ourselves to Him, commit everything we got to Him, and just and just trust Him like children. Like Jesus said, "Hey, come as a little child. You see the kingdom was a little child. You enter in. But if you don't, you won't. You know, because children are very trusting. You, know, you tell the little child, "Hey, if you do this." Uh, go do this, or um, hey, I saw a dog over there. You know they'll believe you. Or I saw a cat over here. They'll believe you. I mean, children are very simple-minded. They, you know, they believe almost anything, pretty much. You know, very trusting. You know, because they're innocent. So let's make sure we we follow the most high with a clean heart. 
and clean minds so we, so we can just take him at his word and, and let him fulfill it. Let him show us that he, you know, he means business. He means what he says and says what he means. But, you know, I got I to cut for a saint of uh, what Pastor was talking about. Hearing the preacher. Hold on, let me, let me read the scripture for us real quick. Hold on. Romans 10, 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? All right, hold on, saints. Let me play this cut. Hold on. Let me know how it's coming in, too, so I may have to uh, change things up. Hold on one sec. All right, Saints, let me try it this way. So I keep myself from getting some of them. Y'all in it? I did not call me. He did. Just like he said to Jeremiah, listen to what he said. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and, and before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. If he knew that about Jeremiah, then what did he know about you? Can you believe that, Scott? Before you even formed, he knew you. The chances of you having salvation was zero. You grew up in a scientist's home with no faith at all. One day he heard his voice. Watch this. How did he hear his voice though? By a preacher. See, the day you hear my heart not your, you wait for an audible voice to come out of heaven. Yeah, you ain't gonna get that. One day you heard this voice, light bulb went off. He heard his voice. Then you tell your wife, Angelica, go and sit down and listen to this. He didn't even know what he was listening to. See, y'all opened his understanding. He didn't know what he was being driven.
driven to, being compelled to, being led to. He had no idea what was going on. So when he says, when he says, before I formed you in the belly, I knew you, and and before you came and formed out of the womb, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet. That's what he tells Jeremiah, right? See, before you was even formed. He knew you. You just now discovering yourself. He in the world doing his little thing. Minding his own business. And all of a sudden, bam, up pops a preacher. Yah opens your understanding at hearing the voice of the preacher. The one that plant, nothing. The one that water, nothing. But y'all to give the increase, everything. Hallelujah, saints. Well, that's all I got for you tonight, saints. Do appreciate each and every one of you being here tonight. Hope you all are uh, edified. We pray that you all continue to maintain your relationship with the Most High. Maintain your sensitivity to His Spirit. And most of all, as you're doing that, don't grieve. You know, walk up rightly before the Most High. Keep yourselves holy. Keep yourselves in the love of Yah. I do bless you all and thank you tonight, saints. Um, but don't forget, keep the, keep the man of Yah in prayer, Pastor Dahl, Pastor Corey, you know, all, the, all of the elders and leadership, you know, Elder Donnie, Elder Rufus, Elder Becker, Teacher Shane, Teacher Eric, you know, all, all the Elder Mitch, you know, Elder, Elder Mitch is even on the road, Saints, so y'all make sure y'all keep him in prayer. But um, just uh, keep keep everybody lifted, Saints, and uh, stay connected with the ministry. Make sure you're watching all the videos. And uh, I guess that's all I got, Saints. I do bless you. Thank you tonight. And uh, we'll see you next time. Shalom. Oh, let me give you guys my email address, too. If you got something that you'd like for me to talk about on the blog talk, I'll be more than happy to as a Ruach directs to uh, cover that at any given time, as we, as we get to it, and I'll give you my email address. Let me pull it up because I don't always know it myself. I mean, a new one just just for you guys because my other one is still full of junk. I can't keep up with it anymore. Um, it's going to be uh, Deacon Bell 777 at gmail.com. Can you post that in there, Brother Ugly? Deacon Bell 777 37s. At gmail dot com. That's all lowercase. But anyway, family, do bless you all. Thank you for coming. Thank you for the fellowship. And we're gonna call that a show tonight. Bless you all, saints. Shalom. Uh-oh, look at him looking.